Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to have you today. I am very glad to see you today. My name is Jonan Kandwano, and I'm the team leader at Janoki Holdings Limited. And at Janoki Holdings Limited, we offer financial relief. We offer credit, affordable credit, and we offer it very fast. So you can always check us out at www.janakiholdings.com and then you can actually get to fund that deal, fund that business in a very, very quick and fast manner. And yet your collateral will be very, very secure. So it's a pleasure to have you today for yet another business talk. As I've already said, Iron Sharpens Iron, so we get to meet here to sharpen one another, to learn from one another, to get to grow one another. Myers, it's a pleasure to have you. It's been a while. I hope you are well. So today's quite an interesting conversation and this spills over to any business that you're running. You could be lending money or you could be doing any other business, but our today's topic is very, very pertinent. It applies to all uh, sorts of businesses, but I particularly to money lending because it's what I do and it's what I've been doing for quite a while and it's what my heart fast for because guys are lending, but they are struggling with the lending. But also, uh, people are getting loans or credits and they are defrauded, which is not healthy. So either way, it should be a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, the clients should be benefiting from the monies you're giving them, but also you as a lender, you should be able to actually recover. So both of you should keep in business because you need one another. Just like I need you to give me uh, interest, income, to keep me sustain, uh, sustain the business, to pay the rent and pay the air costs. You also need me because you get a deal and you need quick money and you need to finance it. So that's why all of us have to actually keep in business. That's why I endeavor to speak us of what the Lord has put on my heart so that you can keep in business as we also grow. So today's topic is customer relationship management in money lending. If you are running a business, whether lending or not, any other business, uh, you need clients, you need customers. If you're lending to yourself, or if you're a customer to your own business alone, or if, you, if, if the family is the only customer, or only clients to your business, then before you know it, or before long, you're going to get out of business. Meaning at the certain point, you should be doing a business to actually serve a customer. And that customer should not necessarily be you. It could be someone else. It actually must be someone else not necessarily you. So the moment you're serving you alone, or you're serving you actually your family members, or your close knit family, then you're actually going to run out of business. Because before you know it, these guys cannot give you the monies, these guys cannot support you enough to help you keep in business. So at a certain point, you need someone out there, you need clients out there, you need customers out there. So for starters, it is good to know that you cannot serve all clients. There are some clients that are cut out for you, and there are some clients that are cut out for someone else. There are some clients that Jonaki Holdings is meant to serve, and there are some clients that Myers or uh, Godwin or someone else, Vaz Consult, is meant to serve. So it is key to first understand the clients that you're actually uh, serving or that you intend to serve. Because then that will give you a leeway, or it, give you, it, it gives you an edge to serve those clients very well because you cannot serve every client. If you think you can serve every client, you're even going to serve the client that you're meant to serve, uh, have big services at the expense of the client who is not good and whom you're not going to serve or you're not meant to serve. I'll give an example. There are some clients that come to Jonaki and they want money that is not secured. And at Jonaki Holdings, we only can give secured money. So straight away, I will not waste this client's time, neither would I want my time to be wasted. So I'll go straight on the point and say, you know what? For us, we give secured money. So meaning that for this particular client, we, are, we actually cannot serve them. So they will save on their time to go to a particular lender who can actually serve them. So it's important, first of all, if, before you think of uh, managing the relations with the, with the client, it starts with the, identifying the type of clients that you're serving. Number one, the type of clients that you're serving. Because if you're a client that we are not able to serve or we are not meant to serve at Jonaki, and I come, tell you come to Tinder, come to our offices, 
they start taking you through the process and ultimately at the end of the day I ask you for a collateral and you don't have it I'll have wasted your time and you'll also have wasted my time and at the end of the day you will find it very hard to refer me to another client because I have not managed our relations very well ideally I should have told you that you know what at Jonaki we only lend secured uh, loans we only can give secured credit facilities so in that case I can actually refer you to my colleague who can lend you and does not necessarily need a collateral can actually look at your business or can actually look at something else so perhaps your LPO something like that then in a way I'm creating a relation because if I know it you'll be knowing a client who, are, who was a collateral and actually Junaki can ably serve so if I waste your time I don't serve you well or I don't I'll refer you to someone who can serve you better, I'll have wasted my chance of you referring me to someone else. So, over 80% of our business, especially lending, is based on trust. Now, you cannot refer someone that you do not trust. If Godwin is my friend, I cannot refer him to a lender whom I know is going to defraud him or whom I know is not legit. So, first of all, there has to be a bit of trust. Secondly, business can start uh, exchanging hands. So I have built trust, even if I have not served you, but I have built trust, and I have told you I cannot serve you, you can proceed someone else. That's point number one. Identify your client, know the niche that you serve. You cannot serve all the clients. Point number two. For the clients that you serve, it is important that you assist them well, if you're lending money. You could be doing another, another business. There are clients that will come for your service, and if your service is a million shillings, someone is bargaining for a hundred thousand Ugandan shillings. For Christ's sake, you cannot reduce the rate from a million shillings to a hundred thousand Ugandan shillings. So definitely, that's one of the indicators that, you know what, I think with this client, I cannot ably serve them. So the moment you note that, it is important that you save in your time and on, 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 the, on the time of the client and you tell them, you know what, I think I'm not able to serve you. I can refer you to my colleague. If you have someone who actually can serve them, or if you don't have anyone, you can still tell them the truth that, you know what, I cannot serve you. So the key thing is to assess the client properly. For example, if you come at Jonaki Holdings Limited, you have a car that is worth 20 million and you strictly want a loan of 20 million, Definitely, we cannot give you that money. Why? Because we give you 50% of the for sale value of the car. And you want 20 million. Ideally, you want to sell the car. So the assessment is very key. So if you manage a facility at the point of assessment, you'll have saved yourself as a company a lot of hassle with that client, but also you'll have saved your name. Because do you ask yourself why there are lots of bad names or clashes or you know, bad mouthing in context, uh, some, some of the bad mouthing is right because there are some people who defraud clients, but also there are some who do genuine work. And because of the bad name that has been tainted, you fall in that category. Or you uh, face the same rage from, from the clients, from the public, you face the same resistance, yet for you, you're a bit exceptional, you're a bit different. So if you do not assess that facility properly at the point of start, and you don't assist that client, that loan is going to end up in default. And before you know it, you're foreclosing on that collateral. I've always emphasized, it's not about the collateral. We've seen clients, the client has a collateral that is worth 500 million, and he wants a loan of maybe 100 million or 50 million. And you actually tell this client, you know what, based on your financials, based on your cash flows, we cannot serve you even when you have this land title. Because if I do not tell you the truth and I go right ahead and I transact with you, when I am very certain that your credit rating is bad or your cash flows are not good or your bank statement is not good, I'll be giving you that money with the intention to foreclose on your collateral. And in the heart of hearts, I'll not be a genuine company. I'll not be a genuine person. I'll not be wishing you the best. The best person will be telling you that, you know what, based on your cash flows, we cannot ably serve you. We think you cannot pay the installment that we need per month because your statement says it all. 
even if you insist, because I know this relationship is going to end up in a bad, in, in a bad way, and you're not going to refer me to someone else, and we thrive on referrals. So I'd like to interact, to, 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 to collide with as few clients as possible, so that I can get as many referrals as possible. So assess your clients properly, irrespective of the business that, you, that you're doing. Now you can imagine going to Serena and you're going to buy, you're going to have lunch and you're beginning for a plate of food from 100,000 or 80,000, you want to pay for the plate of food at 20,000. It would be unbelievable. Someone will know you cannot afford Serena yet. So you can look for a restaurant that can actually fit you. You can imagine someone coming for your suit, or if you're dealing in, um, in clothes, in clothes and I know suits, a person is bargaining for a suit of five million, he wants to give you a hundred or five hundred thousand. Definitely, you tell this person, unfortunately, we cannot serve you. We can find someone else who can actually get your suit at the price that you're looking at. So in a way, it will save you a lot of headache. It also saves the client a lot of headache. And the client, when he lands on a person who falls in your category, he will not hesitate, especially if you have nice suits, to refer a person of that caliber. So assess the clients very well. If you lend money, take your time, look at the client's bank statement. There's, there's, there's a, a notion of clients that come and they are telling you that, you know what, me, I'm not banked. I deal in cash. I work in Chikubo and for us we transact in cash. And ideally you cannot confirm that cash transaction. You cannot confirm those cash, cash flows, those cash transactions. So meaning that there's no confirmation at all. It's only him who knows whether he deals in cash or not. You can only confirm by a bank statement. And that's why I advise that if you're running a business, even if you're running it remotely, open a company or register that business. There's a provision at URS before that. Register that business, open a bank account, and start transacting with the bank account. Because that will help you a lot. Next time you're going to get stuck and you need someone to support you, because your cash flows are very bad, they will not be able to support you. Why? Because you don't have any cash flows that you're showing. You're handling money cash, so someone cannot ascertain. So you lose a very huge deal, you, lo you lose a very lucrative deal, just because your cash flows are not good. And it's not about putting money on the account and keeping it there. It's about the back and forth. You're withdrawing, you're depositing. You're withdrawing, you're depositing. So your account is busy, meaning that you're doing something with your money. So I'll get to trust you that, you know what, this guy is actually doing something productive and he can make this uh, pay up. So assess your clients properly. You'll be doing a, a, a service to yourself and to the client. If it is CRB, credit rating, uh, credit bureau, go check out. Does this person have five loans and he wants a sixth loan? If it is the case, don't give them the money. It will save you, it will save him. Even if they have a collateral. Go find out, does this person have a cash flow? Tick. Point number three, does this person have the collateral that can secure the money in question? So the number of assessment criteria that you actually have to look at to assess a client properly. And more details can actually be shared with the guys that I mentor. I also run masterminds. If you guys who have signed up have appreciated the masterminds that I run, we go through to the detail of the steps that you can use to assess the clients. So that you can actually give money to a legit client and in a way you're going to keep in business. So if you don't get a legit client, it's going to eat on your principal, defraud on your money, and before you know it, you're out of business. So assess your client properly, properly, properly. In a way, you'll be building a relationship with that client. They will be able to pay, then they can enable not collide with you, and they can refer you to other clients as well. Point number three on customer relations management. It is important that you get the information about the client. If you're serving Jonan, what does Jonan like? Where does Jonan live? Is he married or not? What business does he do? All this information, if you have it, you can know how to best serve Jonan. For example, if you know that I have children and it's a time for school fees, I shouldn't be hard up. You can actually evoke them and tell them, you know what, Jonan, it is time for, 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 for school startups. We have a package specifically for school fees. And actually with this package, you can able to pay it in three months. And the rate is reduced maybe to 3% or 5%. 
or it's a round figure in the, in the term period. In a whole term, you can pay maybe 5% on the money you are giving to you. So if you get to get the information of the client in your database, you can have packages for those particular clients, meaning that you can actually serve them better. The statement that I started with is that if you're in business, you're not meant to serve you. You're meant to serve someone else. You're meant to serve your client, not you. So in everything that you're doing should be targeted towards the client. So it's important that you get as much information as the client can offer you as possible because it's only when you actually know my information or you know my data that you can serve me better. If you're dealing in clothes, you can know which sizes I put on. If you're dealing in shoes, you need to know which size of shoes I put on. And then you can actually refer me to the shoes, maybe game shoes or gym shoes or golf shoes or different ranges, but you'll be having my sizes or you'll be having my size. So collect data, collect data and have knowledge about what to do with the data that you collect. Tailor those packages to those uh, clients based on their data. That will even tell you how many clients do you serve, which age bracket, demographics, where do they live, where do they stay, what do they like, what more activities do they do. That informs even subsequent businesses that you create. So collect data from the clients that you actually serve. Get that information. It will help you to manage those relationships. It will help you to get as many referrals as possible. Point number four, have interest, have interest in the clients. Celebrate your clients. If it is their birthdays, what have you done about it? You can imagine how happy a person can be if you knew their birthdays and you perhaps gave them a present or perhaps sent them a message. But you see, you cannot send me a message on my birthday until you actually know my birthday date. So and you cannot know my birthday date until you've collected that information. So you need to collect the information first, then you can actually send me a message, wish me a happy birthday. So celebrate your clients. If, if I've been married for 10 years, I mean, a message to celebrate my anniversary will be very, very profound. I'll, that's how you can actually turn the normal clients to raising funds to clients who are actually your marketers. They can go and market you without your knowledge. They're going to speak about you without your knowledge. They're actually doing the marketing. You guys, the most expensive thing about a business is not even the staff that you employ. It's not even these other costs, the operational costs that you involve. It is the marketing. It is very costly. You can know that you have hit it if the clients can afford to market for you. The clients cannot afford to market for you unless you have their interests at heart. You cannot have their interests at heart until you have their data, their information that concerns them. Until you, can, you know what touches their heart. Until you know that their birthdays are on this, the, the, the anniversaries fall on this date, how do I celebrate with these my clients? They have supported me all this through. They have kept me in business. What can I do for them? As the last point, celebrate your clients. Get the data, use it profoundly use it very well celebrate your clients that's when you're going to have raving funds that's when you're going to grow with your clients that you started with and you move the journey step by step with them that's why companies celebrate clients that they've been with for the last 10 15 years someone tells you i joined i, I had this guy when he he had a turnover of 500 million or 50 million but now he has a turnover of 500 million i started with this guy when he had a turnover of 1 million but now I'm celebrating him, he has a turnover of, of 100 million. Those are milestones that you cannot just hit randomly. You need to be intentional. You need to plan for them. You need to nurture them. You need to nourish them. You need to water them so that they can actually grow. So as I conclude, four things I've mentioned. Four things I've mentioned. First, know the, the, the kind of plants that you serve. Secondly, get the data about them. Get the data. Thirdly, celebrate your clients. And fourth, assess your clients properly. If you do these four things, it will be a good starting point 
I know there are a number of other things that you meant to do, but I picked the four that you can actually start with for now. I want to bombard you with a lot of information and, and you cannot implement any. So if you do those four things, they will help you transition from point A, point B, point C to your growth level that you actually anticipate. Otherwise, you're going to start there, you're celebrating, you're setting those goals, you're retreating, you all jet up, it is January, and you reach March, the energy has gone down, the business has not grown, your targets have not been realized, and you reach media, you assess yourself, you've achieved maybe 10% or 15% of what it is that you plan to achieve in the whole year, and before you know it, you've not even achieved 50% or 30%, before the... By the time the year ends, you've actually almost achieved maybe 30 or 20 percent or a maximum 35 percent instead of 100 percent. And you keep wondering. And then the other year will come, still the same thing. So start with these small things. Do as you roll out, as you learn. Do as you roll out, as you learn. And that's when you're going to get to the levels, to the goals that you intend to achieve this very year. So I hope you learn and implement and go out there and teach someone. Go out there and mentor someone. Go out there and support someone. It's until you've given that you can actually get. It is a symbiotic relationship. If you cannot give, then you cannot receive. Go out there and support, and in a way, you'll grow yourself. Because you do not know whom you're supporting and what other clients you can bring on board and how you can actually support you. Go out there, give out, give out knowledge, give out wisdom, support selflessly. And before you know it, your business will go. So thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Uh, may the God bless you. May he bless the works of your hands. May he protect you and guard you with your families. And may he uh, grow your business to higher heights. May you be a service to the community, to the country, and to the world. Always check us out at www.jonakiholdings.com. I also have a YouTube channel at Jonan Kandwanaho you look at the different topics that I've talked about. Please subscribe, it's free of charge. Leave your comments. And above all, share your testimony of what it is that you've learned and implemented. That fills my tongue. Until you do that, I know that you're just, you're just watching and you, you're not implementing and you're wasting your time. You're also wasting my time because you're meant to go out there and take at least one action. I love you guys and I wish you the very best of the Friday, depending on the country you're, you're living in. But it's, 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 it's evening in, in Kampala, Uganda. And it's a Friday evening. I wish you the best of the weekend. Enjoy. Um, see you next Friday. 5.30. Blessings. Bye-bye.